Hey, you ready? I'm ready. Song's good. I'm good. You're good. You're here. Let's math it up and let's go. Okay, so today we got our solving equations, assignment two. Who knows what your teacher's calling it, but that's what I'm calling it for my YouTube title. Now, um, what's new today is we're going to do some two-step equations. Not new, but more of them today. And what's another skill is we're going to do some combining like terms, but using, depending what level you got of worksheet, we're going to also be doing distribution, the distributive property. So let's jump right into it. Question 1a, it says, simplify the fall. Simplify, it's like out of the camera frame. Simplify the following. And if you have to, you have to distribute. So the first one here is a plus 7 plus A plus 6, we're going to combine our A's right, right here and right there. That's going to be 2A and then plus 13. That's our answer. That's simplified. We have A and A and then 6 and 13 coming together, combining our like terms. Now the next one we have is 3X plus 2X. Now this is going to be, combine our coefficients, 5X, simple as that. Question 1c. Now, this is our first distribution property. If this was algebra in like order of operations, we could simply do what's inside the brackets, the parentheses, and then multiply by the three afterwards. But this is not. This is more solving equations, and we don't know what x is. We can't multiply x or add or subtract x and 2 because we don't know what x is, but we can distribute. So first we'll multiply that to get 3x and then we'll multiply that to get minus 6. That's it. That's our answer. 3x minus 6. The next one, once again, the same type of equation. It's 5n minus 2. We're going to first go 5 times n, 5n, and then we're going to minus 5 times 2, minus 10. That's our answer. Now, the last two, if you're on assignment number three, you're going to need to combine like terms after this distribution of the um, number that's nested against the parentheses. So first, we're going to go and do this. 7 times 2, and this is 14n plus 7 times 6, which is going to be 42. 42, and then we're going to bring down our 3 up here. And last step is we're going to go and combine the 3 and the 42, right? The 3 and the 42 are like terms, so we're going to go 14n plus 45. That's going to be our final answer right there. And the last one, this one's in kind of nice order because it's it's already there. We're going to go uh, times 2. So this is going to be 4x minus 8, because we have this one as well, plus 5. So we're just dropping the, the 5 down. Now we're going to combine these two. We're going to still have 4x. Oops, 4x. We're just dropping that one down. And then, but there we're going to be minus 8, right? This minus is important. Minus 8 plus 5. So it's like a negative eight plus five is still gonna be negative three. So our answer is going to be four X minus three. All right, moving on to our solving equations. Now, these one step equations are still important to pay attention to, even though we've done lots of them already. And again, I don't want you just to use substitution and be like, hmm, what is it? Oh, I think it's three. It's easy to do, but I want you to practice the skills of solving equations using um, isolation. You want to isolate the variable and apply the same thing to both sides, keep the equation balanced, and then slowly work through the problem to apply that skill when things get harder. 
So first, isolate the variable. What's happening? It's adding six. We're going to subtract six. We want to subtract six on both sides. And then that changes our equation to P, because six and six cancel out on that side. And on the opposite side, we're left with six. We're left with six minus nine. And we're going to do that, and P will equal three. That's our answer. I want to make sure you are following those steps. Now, with this question, we have V minus four equals five. So we're going to add four. And we're going to add four on this side of the equation. On this side, they cancel out. They become redundant. You don't need them. And then we're left with V equals four plus five, which is nine. V equals nine. The following question to C. Now the numbers are a little bit bigger. Same sequence of steps here. We want to isolate the variable, isolate n. What's happening to n? It's being added to by 7. We're going to subtract 7. On the opposite side, we also want to subtract 7. On this side, it cancels out. We'll do the same thing to both sides. We're left with n is equal to 26 minus 7, which is 19. That's our answer. My box left there. All right. Um, to D. Now, this one's a little bit strange. The n is on the other side. So there's a few different ways you can do this. You can add n to both sides in advance. Um, and then you're left with n plus 5 equals 8. Um, but what I like to do is leave it to the end. So first I'm going to subtract 8. And then I'll subtract 8 on that side. And on this side it cancels out. All right? This is a positive 8. It cancels out and we're left with negative eight plus five. Mm, let's subtract five. Let's just go uh, subtract five, five subtract eight, sorry, which is gonna be negative three is equal to uh, negative N, right? This negative sign is gonna come down with the N, come down here, because that's a negative, a minus n is a negative n, so negative 3 equals negative n, and either we can flip sides and flip signs at this point, or you could think of it as um, multiplying or dividing both sides by negative 1, divide by negative 1. When you divide by 1, it is the same number. Negative divided by negative is going to equal a positive, so it's left with 3 equals n. And right, these positives sort of cancel each other out. And of course, n equals one, three is, is kind of how you want to leave it. Some strategies in there that you can do. You can also, what you can also do is add n to both sides. And that's another appropriate way to do it. All right, let's go next one. x plus 60 equals negative 19. So some integers in here. Let's subtract 60 from both sides, subtract 60. So we're, this is going to get pretty negative here. We're left with, uh, cancel those out. We're left with x is equal to negative 19 minus 60. So that's negative 79. Negative 19 minus 60, negative 79. That's a big negative number. Now, another one, the x is on the wrong side and it's negative again. So a few questions ago I said, there's another way to do this. Why don't we do this the other way for this one? So instead of multiplying or using a negative divide by negative one at the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add x to both sides. On this side, negative x and positive x, they're going to cancel out. And on the other side, we're going to be left with x plus 99 is equal to 67. We can subtract 99 and, oh, sorry, not equal sign. Subtract 99 from both sides. And we're left with this canceling out. x is equal to 67 subtract 99. So 67 subtract 99, what's that going to be? 
Uh, it's kind of like 67 subtract 100 plus 1. So 67 subtract 100 would be negative 47. Negative 48. Negative 48. X is equal to negative 48. 2F negative 32 what did I do wrong with my math here ninety nine is equal to sixty seven subtract forty eight oh okay sixty seven subtract that, yeah, 32 makes way more sense. Where did I get? Subtract 100, 60, 40. Where did I do that wrong? Oh my gosh. Negative 32. This is why it's nice to have your answers because you can catch yourself. I was like thinking my math, negative 67, 100, so that's, negative 30 2 okay that's a pretty big error anyway I'll move it on all right uh, solve the one step equation but now we're using subtraction no sorry multiplication and division so we got to unmultiply and undivide to isolate the variable, we got to apply the inverse operation with the same amount. So the first one is 5n equals 15. So 5n is 5 times n. 5 is the coefficient, n is the variable. 5 times n equals 15. Probably already figured out in your head what it is, but let's show our work. We're going to divide both sides by 5. On one side, it's going to cancel it. When you multiply a number by 5 and then divide that number by 5, it returns back to its original number. It just remains n. And then we're left with n is equal to 15 my, uh, divided by 5, and that's going to be 3. n equals 3. b, now we're doing the opposite. We want to multiply because it's being a divided by eight. So we want to multiply. A divided by eight is um, a division and the value is eight. We want to multiply, which is the opposite, by eight. So let's do both sides. Uh, I gotta go like, write my eight, multiply, write my uh, times eight on this side, on this side, times 8 and divide by 8 is going to cancel, leaving us with a is equal to 10 times 8, which is 80. a is equal to 80. c. 2 is equal to k divided by 7. Uh, opposite side, same thing. Doesn't matter what side the variable's on. We times that by, uh, not by 2, we times it by 7. We times this side by 7. And on this side, they cancel out. So it's equal to k is equal to 2 times 7, which is 14. 14 divided by 7 is equal to 2. That's correct. And then, of course, the last step, let's write it. k is equal to 14. Always nice to have the written with the variable first. Let's go to the 3d. 7a equals 126. Same thing. We want to un, unmultiply. We want to do the opposite to isolate the variable. The opposite operation, the same amount, same value. So times 7, divide by 7. a is equal to 126 times 7. So that's going to be times 20 would be 140. 2 less times 18. A times 18, or A is equal to 18. 18 times 7 is 126. That sounds about right. 
something 26 times something is 832 all right i'm going to divide by 26 divide by 26 pretty straightforward that cancels out and then this is left with our um some kind of complex division right so v is equal to and i'm going to use my calculator um 200 that's 10 Eight, eight, thirty-two, eight hundred thirty-two, divided by twenty-six, thirty-two, um, thirty-two, eight hundred thirty-two divided by twenty-six, thirty-two. You could do long division on that if you wanted. I didn't feel like it, especially after getting that earlier question incorrect. All right, uh, right, so something times 17 times something is 221. So we're going to do the opposite, right? Not multiply, but divide. The opposite will be division here. We're gonna divide both sides. We're gonna cancel those out. So X is equal to 221 divided by 17. 221 divided by 17. So 170 is 10. And then another 11 and 87, 12, 13. X is equal to 13. And X is equal to 13 and just gonna check my math on that one. That's 3F. 3F13, correct. Okay. Next one. So we're on to some two-step equations now. So two-step equations can be it's real, they're not they're not more difficult, they're just more complex. You just have more steps. But if the, the steps aren't more difficult, it's the same steps, you just have to do them in, in the proper order to solve the questions, and it's nice to practice bunch of different ones okay so here's our term 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 this term has our variable in it that's what we want to isolate that term so let's get rid of this one minus four we're gonna minus four from this side so it's gonna be the next step is gonna be k over four that's gonna cancel is equal to 6 minus 4, right? Equal to 6 minus 4, which is 2. k over 4 is equal to... Now we're back to a one-step equation. And we know what to do. We're going to multiply this by 4. Multiply this by 4. And this side, that will cancel, leaving us with k is equal to 4 times 2, which is 8. k is equal to 8. Next question... 4 times x plus 3 equals 11. Um, so first thing, let's get rid of our 3 by subtracting 3 on both sides. And then it leaves us with 4x equals 8. Now, cancels out. It is important to line up our equal signs and just keeps things neat and tidy. When we divide 4x by 4, it leaves us with x is equal to 2. 2. 4 times 2 plus 3 is 11. That's our answer. Question th 4, 4c. All right, so we have negative 4 plus 8p equals negative 108. So let's go plus 4, and let's plus 4, and that will cancel out, negative 4 plus 4, they cancel out, leaving us with 8p is equal to negative 104, negative 108 plus 4 is 104, moving up the number line, and then we're going to divide by 8, and divide by 8, and that's going to be cancelling out, leaving us with p 
is equal to negative 108 divided by negative 104 divided by 8. So that's going to be 10 to get to 80, another 3, 13 negative 13 is our answer. P is equal to negative 13. Uh, for D. First, we want to isolate our term that has the variable in it. So that term is n divided by 5. We're going to divide, we're going to get rid of this and both sides, leaving us with that alone. The isolation of the variable n is over 5 is equal to 12 minus 9, which is 3. n times 5 minus divided by 5 is equal to 5 times 3 and then we're left with that cancelling out going n is equal to 5 times 3 3 times 5 which is 15 n equals 15 all right k or by uh, 4 e similar very similar question let's subtract 11 let's subtract 11 from both sides on this side 11 cancels out leaving us with k over 9 is equal to 2 13 minus 11 is 2 then we have our next chunk here which is um to get rid of the division to get rid of the divided by 9 so we'll go 9 multiplied and we will multiply this side by 9 as well this side it cancels out leaving us with simply k is equal to 18 or k is equal to 2 times 9 but we can simplify that side of the equation k is equal to 18 f numbers are a little bit bigger for f we're going to plus 5 here and we're going to plus 5 on the opposite side to isolate our term with the variable. Now, 13k, oops, that's 3, 13k is equal to negative 100 and um, 56, 156. Now, we're going to go divide by 13 divide by 13 uh, not negative 13 divide by 13 here on this side they cancel out leaving us with just k is equal to and it's going to be 12 130 plus nope not 12 interesting 160 1 plus 5 if I made a typo on this one. 4 F negative 12. Yeah. But 12 times 13 isn't 156, is it? 136. Oh, oh no, it, it is. Oh my god. Negative 12. Yeah. Uh, mental math. You make mistakes inside your brain. All right, well, we got it though. 12. Negative 12. Sorry. All right, let's look. This is the. These are two step equations and they are decimal. So I'm going to use a calculator because I've seemed to be making quite a few errors on my mental math. And I want to be accurate. I also want to be fast. I don't want to spend my whole time just adding and. So I'll try my best. Maybe I won't use a calculator on all of them, just some of them. Most of them, let's be real here. I'm gonna use a calculator on a bunch of them. All right, so first thing, I wanna isolate my variable. Isolate my term with the variable in it. So I'm gonna subtract 2.3. That's gonna cancel out. If I do it to one side, I gotta do it to the other side, 2.3. Um, and that's gonna leave me with 2.5x is equal to 14. It's equal to 14 
because 16.3 minus 2.3 is 14. Now I want to divide by 2.5. Divide by 2.5. Now it is 14. Does 2.5 go into 14 equally? I don't think so. All right. 14 divided by 2.5 equals 5.6. Okay. So this side will cancel out, leaving us with x, and this side will equal 5.6. x is equal to 5.6. 5a, 5.6. All right, next one. So here's our term. We want to get that term isolated. So we want to get this. We're going to subtract 1.2. Oops, that's 1.5. 1.2. 2 from both sides, subtract 1.2. That will cancel here, leaving us with k over 2.2 is equal to 1. Point is equal to negative 0.5. It's equal to negative 0 0.5. 1.2 sub. 0.75, yeah, negative 1.5. And then we're going to multiply times 2.2, the opposite, times 2.2. On this side, they will cancel out, leaving us with k is equal to negative 0.5 times 2.2. 2. 5 times 22 is a 110, negative negative 1.1 1. 1. negative 1.1 1. 1. check my answer b 5b negative 1.1 1. 1. all right correct next one okay so this one's a weird one it's um the term the term's kind of like all chunked together here. Like this is one kind of term here. So what I'm going to do on this one, don't, anyway, uh, I'm first going to multiply by 10 here. So because it's being divided by 10, I'm going to times 10 on both sides. And that's going to cancel out here, leaving us with negative 8.6 plus r is equal to, uh, move our decimal over one, 12.9. At this point, we can add 8.6, add 8.6, right? Do the opposite. That cancels out. And it says r is equal to 12.9 plus 8.6. So that's 20. 1.5 r is equal to 21.5 5c um, 21.5 all right always nice to check your work now negative 4.6 m minus 5.5.4 so we want to add first thing is isolate our term with our variable in it so we want to go plus 5.4, plus 5.4. This side's going to cancel out, leaving us with negative 4.6m equals negative um, 50.6, 50.6, 6, 51. And minus 0.4 is 50.6. Okay. Now we want to divide because it's being multiplied. So we'll divide by negative 4.6. Negative 4.6. And this side will cancel, including the negative. The negative will cancel as well. And it'll leave us with positive m, which is what we want. We don't want a negative m for an answer because that just doesn't make sense. We're left with positive m is equal to what? The positive m is equal to 50.6 minus divided by 4.6. Calculator, 
50.6 divided by 4.6 equals 11. M is equal to 11. All right, and the negatives are going to cancel out on this side. 11. All right. That, that's a nice answer. 5D, 11. Next question. All right, so now it's on the opposite side again, so don't get confused. Same steps. Let's plus 19.2 to isolate the term. Plus 19.2 on both sides. We're going to isolate 5.6. So that's left with, now we have our equals A over 5.6 is equal to negative 15.2 plus 19.2. So that's 15 plus, it's like the difference between 15 and 19, which is four. So this is gonna be four, pencil fell apart here. 15, that's gonna be um, four is equal to A over 5.6. Now we gotta multiply 5.6 times four times 5.6 on both sides. Now this is gonna be canceled out. We're just left with A is equal to 5.6 times 4, uh, 224, 22.4, 22.4, A is equal to 22.4, check my math on that, 5E, 22.4, all right. Last one. So this is a similar one to the one above it, C. And first thing we want to do, we want to multiply by 12. 12 times times 12. That gets rid of that right off the hop. And it's negative 11.7 plus X is equal to 155.55 times 12. 1.55 times 12 is equal to 18.6, 18.6. Now, we want to add 11.7, add 11.7. This side that will cancel out, leaving us with x is equal to, now that's going to be 9, oh, sorry, um, 28, 29, 30. One, th oh shoot, 29, 29, 29, 30, oh my god, 30.3, 30.3, 30.3, 30. oh, brain, 30.3, Oh, that's it. 30.3 is it? It doesn't seem, feels like I'm missing one last step. F is 30.3. It's 6.9. Why did I miss? What did I miss? Times 12. Times 12, right? And we're left with multiply both sides by 12, 11, negative 11.7 11 plus x plus 11.7. .7. Is it a typo? Oh my gosh. My brain. What does my answer say? I'm F is 6.9, negative 6.9, negative 6.9, once, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't work for X, 11.6, sorry, 11.4, Hold on. I'm wondering if this is a typo. 
not. Good old photo math will help me and tell me if I'm correct here. I hope, I hope you're watching this. This is like epic blunder here. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so it's a typo. I'm right. X is equal to 30.3. It's a typo. Redeemed. My answer on my answer sheet is incorrect. My answer on my paper is correct. Let's go. I hope you learned something. All right, practice, practice, practice. And always math it up.